Hello. Today we're going to talk about what airplanes cost. And we could probably end the video and just say too frickin' much and be done, but we'll get a little more details here. I actually brought a cheat sheet today because airplane costs get complicated. We got direct costs, we got fixed costs, and I, I also call them a hybrid direct cost, and I'll explain in a little bit. So let's go over fixed cost. Your fixed cost would be your the plane. Now, you can go call Embraer, Cessna, Learjet, whoever, and get a price of a new plane. You know, the price of this plane new probably retail about $11 million. Now, you're not going to pay that, but it's going to be close. Um, if you buy it in December with what they got non-sold, you might get a very good deal. I think the least expensive used one will be close to $7 million. There's probably one in there at 6 and a half that I don't know about, but it might be that price for a reason. So, I'm not going to get the cost plane, how you amortize it, if you want to pay for it, 20 year mortgage or whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But we also got facilities. You see the hangar here. We got a beautiful facility here. We're in kind of a high priced hangar area. A hangar, I'm going to tell you, you can spend, in a yearly basis, you could probably spend 30 grand to 120,000. Or excuse me, yeah, 120,000 a year. So, there's your hangar. And you're going to pay that whether you fly zero hours or you fly a thousand. Then you also have your other stuff if you need an office, if you have a flight department, you need a couple pilots, if you have offices there, what other facilities, you know, we got a GP, our own GPU here, that's a ground power unit. Um, so that's your, your facilities. The other thing is going to be insurance. And I'm not talking health insurance for your pilots, I'm talking insurance for the airplane. How much liability you have, Let's just throw on a number, let's just put 25000 there for the year. Again, you pay that whether you fly zero hours or a thousand hours. I better not say a thousand. I know we've never flown over 450 hours a year, so they haven't given us an extra boost. But I don't know if you flew a thousand hours, they might look at your history and charge you more. So let's just say 25000 You also have subscriptions. We have chart subscriptions, we have phone subscription, nav data subscriptions. Just write $10,000 in there, and it'll cover it. You might get by with $8,500, but then you'll go over. Um, you got pilots. You know, if you're a pilot, you don't get paid enough. If you're management, pilots are whining and get paid too much. So that's what pilots make. I'm not going to talk about what I make. That's kind of for my, me and my boss to know. Um, but pilots are not cheap. And, you know, as I said before, I would like to get paid more. I'm sure he'd probably like to pay me a little less. So it's probably about right. Training. Remember pilots, you have to train in this jet every year. We need a type rating. If you hire a pilot and he has to go to initial school, it's about $28,000. Plus I got to go to school every year for this plane, which is about fourteen dollars to $15,000. Okay, now you buy a brand new airplane, they'll give you four, excuse me, they'll give you two train, initial trainings for free. So you can hire two pilots and train them first year. Ooh, big deal, huh? But it is a big deal because like they'll let you turn one initial in a two recurrent. So when we bought an airplane, I can get four years of training for free. So those are your fixed costs, and those are relatively fixed. There, you know, there could be some other incidentals here and there. But that's fixed costs. So whether you fly zero hours, or less, whether you fly 50 hours, 300 hours, 600 hours, those fixed costs are the same. That's where if you fly more, it costs less to fly your airplane. But we don't really look at the fixed costs when we fly the airplane. Like when we're in a when we're trying to decide if we should take the airplane, we don't look at those. We've already paid those, or they're already in the budget. If if so and so from the company needs to take the plane somewhere, we look at the direct operating costs. And that's what we'll get into now. So with direct operating costs, what we have to deal with is what we pay by flight hour, and it really stays fairly variable. Well, constant per flight hour, I should say. That's a better term. And the number one cost of your direct cost is fuel. We average about 160 gallons an hour. 160 gallons. So, and right now, fuel is, jet fuel is cheap. Well, relatively cheap. So we're, right now our jet fuel per hour is costing us about $560 an hour. Last year was a little over $760 an hour. That's every time you fly, your dollar per hour cost, just in fuel. Now we can go a long ways. At 2.7 hours we'll be in Scottsdale from Des Moines. 2.2 we'll be home. So 
there is some variable to that in the fact that if you have short trips, you might do 180 to 190 gallons an hour. We do a lot of long trips, so we'll do we're a little less. And if we even did longer, we can get down to that 150 to 155 pretty easy. But for the year, 160 to 165 gallons an hour, times it by your fuel cost. Right now, we're kind of using three and a half gallons, three three dollars and fifty cents a gallon, because we're buying under three dollars in some places and three sixty-five in others. So that's your fuel cost. Um, that's going to be totally fit, totally direct on the airplane. Now, I talked about a hybrid direct cost, and I'm going to call that maintenance, because this airplane has what they call a 12-month maintenance schedule. It goes to maintenance every 12 months. So we, this one goes into maintenance every December, whether we fly an hour or we fly 600 hours. It's due every 12 months. Now, there's also a 600-hour inspection. It must be done every 600 hours. We've had three phenoms, and we've worked very hard to fly them 300 hours a year when we had two. We only have one now, and we fly about 300 hours a year. So at 12 months, we'll go for a 12-month inspection. And it's actually a 12, 24, 36, up to 60-month inspection. That starts over at the 12. But for all practical purposes, call it a 12-month inspection. And then we have a 600-hour inspection that we do every two years. So at the 24-month, our maintenance will be a little higher because we'll do the 24-month inspection, which is slightly more in-depth than the 12-month, and we have a 600-hour inspection. And, but we only have one downtime. Because if your plane's down for two weeks of maintenance, you still pay your pilot, you still pay your insurance, you still pay your hangar, all that stuff. So downtime's a big deal. I mean, you're still paying all your direct costs, plus you're paying your maintenance costs. But we figure in year one, we're about 60 bucks an hour in scheduled maintenance. Year two, let's see, about 120 bucks an hour. In year three, you start having warranty come off. And we figure about actually $100 an hour, only because the year three maintenance schedule is less than the year two, 36 month check, and you're not doing a 600 hour inspection. Year four has been fairly pricey. So that's your maintenance. And you can throw maybe 10, $30 in there per hour for like tires. We fly 300 hours a year. We get about 200 to 220 landings a year in what we fly. So we're only replacing tires about once a year. Um, and it's costing us about 10 bucks an hour in tires. So your maintenance is, that means it's pretty, for us it's very direct, 300 hours, just divide it. But if you fly 200 hours, well your maintenance went up 50% an hour. Now, if you fly 600 hours, it went down by almost half, because then you can do your 600 hour inspection with the 12 month, your next 600 hour inspection with the 24 month. But if you're flying 450, you're gonna end up having another week of downtime for your 600 hour inspection. It's really only about three days, but you're gonna have another downtime in the middle of the year. So this, these phenoms work very well on a 300 or 600 hour an hour a year flying. Uh, the other part of maintenance is engines, and you always break up engines away from maintenance. And those engines, 5,000 hour TBO, or overhaul time. So every 2,500 hours, you'll have to do a hot section. I would budget 100 grand an engine for that, so 200,000. When you overhaul them, I'd budget a half million. So that's $1 million. So $1.2 million over 5,000 hours comes to $240 an hour. Put that in the budget, you're going to need it. Um, you can say, well, I'm going to trade the airplane off when I got 2,000 hours. You still pay for it because the plane is devalued by that much money. When, when you look at an airplane, you look at the year, it's year, every year it devalues, and every hour it devalues on the price of the engine. When it gets the engine overhauled, it's like having a brand new engine. So that's just devaluing the airplane. We do no maintenance programs at this company. And I've talked about it for budget-wise. You know, we've paid some stuff. I know we're going to have one thing on this engine we're going to have to get done. We've got a Garlock seal, which is about a $10,000 fix. Um, we're not we're on engine warranty. Um, it just would not leak enough during the warranty for them to replace it. And it's really still with intolerance, but it's, it's just a mess. Um, but if you look in the maintenance manual, it is within budget. I hope that helped on aircraft operating costs. And I get a lot of questions about landing fees and stuff like that. And, and there's, I'll add two things in there, which I kind of find small in the grand scheme of things when I put in there, landing fees. I fly in the U.S., a little bit in Canada. I have gone to the Caribbean, but those are the exceptions. 
So if we fly almost only in the U.S. It used to be more in Canada. Don't seem to do like we used to. But landing fees are minimal. You know, we go pay a $27 landing fee in Arizona, but we go there by 450 gallons of fuel, so we're paying $1,400 in fuel or something. $27, we just throw it in the fuel cost. We don't even worry about it. And in general aviation, if you, if you look at where you're going, we don't use the big airports that have big landing fees most of the time. So, you know, we fly into Chicago, we go into DePage County Airport, or uh, we go to Elkhart, which is in Indiana, around the south side of the airport, or um, we've gone on some others like Midway, and I think they have a landing fee, but you buy a little fuel, expensive fuel, they'll waive a lot of the handling fees, but you still pay a $30 security fee. So landing fees, don't even worry about those. Um, incidentals, one thing I did kind of forget to talk about is me. Now, not my salary, but when I fly a four-day trip, hotels, meals, you know, you don't pay for my entertainment. You know, if I go golfing or if I go to a shooting range or something, that's not paid for. But I'm my hotel's paid for, my meal's paid for, and I'm on the road. But, you know, you have some limitations in that. I mean, we don't have, I've never been told limitations at this company, but I'm also very frugal when it comes to that. I'm not going to go out and buy lobster dinners on the company dime, because then I would have limitations. Uh, I'd call those incidentals. If you're going to complain about a $12 meal that your pilots are getting, well, you know what, you probably can't afford the airplane. And realize, we fly this airplane single pilot. So realize if you have two pilots, all of a sudden you got twice the cost of training, twice the cost of pilots. Um, and I, I will tell you, I'll finish on the video on this, on pilots. Before the virus and all this stuff going on with the economy, pilots were in very short supply. You wanted to take good care of them. I will tell you right now, old pilots have kind of got a wait and see approach because are the airlines going to lay off? Are these pilots going to try to come back to corporate? I don't know. So we'll see in the next, the next 12, two year, 12 months, 24 months, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with pilots because there was a pretty good pilot shortage going on. Um, it was very hard to find pilots. So we'll see what happens. But always remember, you get two pilots, and here's something to think about as you end this video. You have an airplane, two pilots. That means you got, let's just say four weeks of vacation. You're only given, this is the U.S., we only get two weeks to use the start, maybe three. You work up to four or five. Um, you get a pilot to take a two-week vacation. You fly your plane, two pilots. Now you got to hire a pilot. Whether you hire have three pilots on staff, or, and the other thing, you, your pilots go to school for a week. You're not flying the airplane, or you got another pilot on staff, and you all three your pilots go at different weeks if you're flying two pilots. Now we, my boss tried to work around me when I'm gone for four or five days for training or vacation. But I don't take a lot of vacation. I. You know, I do a lot of side trips here and there, or I see we're not flying for four days. I, I guess I grew up working, so I'm not, I'm just not really good at taking time off to a fault. But that's what, that's things to think about when you have an airplane. So I'll end it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, make sure you like it. And I guess when you got, at the end of the day, airplanes are fairly expensive. Here's the blue skies.